All right, well, hello physics students and welcome to this uh, video lecture which is going to kind of debrief the problems that we worked on on Friday relating to motion graphs. Um, and it's also going to introduce us to some big equations that we have that we can use um, to solve more complex uh, constant acceleration scenarios. So understand what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, now use mathematics uh, in combination right now with motion graphs to help us analyze um, these sorts of scenarios. So I'm going to go through problem one um, for the problems that you were working on uh, the other day. So what I was asking you to do is to create qual or quantitative velocity versus time graphs. Okay, So what that means is that we're actually attaching numbers to these graphs now. So far, we've just been focused on graph shapes, but we wanted to know, um, you know how the motion of the object looks based on known values that we have. So if we look at this first problem, uh, we're being told that this car is accelerating at a constant negative rate from 20 meters per second. Okay, so my 20 meters per second, if this is my velocity versus time graph, is going to be up here. Now, we know it comes to rest, it stops at 5 seconds, okay? So at 5 seconds, from 0 to 5, we should be seeing a line that looks like this. Now that object is stopped for 2 seconds. And then it once again negatively accelerates to negative 10 meters per second in those 2 seconds. So this is the velocity versus time graph that we should have here. Now, another thing that you were asked to do is you were asked to create an acceleration versus time graph. Okay. So, there's our acceleration versus time graph. And really, if we look at this, remember from a velocity versus time graph, the slope of it tells us acceleration. So, we're only seeing two slopes here. We're seeing two negative slopes. So, that needs to tell us that we should be graphing below our x-axis here because we have negative accelerations. But now here's the thing. We need to know what the magnitude of those accelerations are. So what we can do is we can just find the slope of these lines. Just find the slopes. So if we do that correctly, we should see that from 0 to 5, we have an acceleration of negative 4 meters per second squared. And then, from 7 to 9, we have a slope of negative 5. Okay, so we have an acceleration of negative 5 from 7 to 9. Okay, now the last step here, the last step, I'm going to have to shorten this up a little bit. Um, we're trying to find the distance and displacement of the car. So from a velocity versus time graph, if we take the area between our graph shape and our x-axis, we can find both distance and displacement, okay? So basically what we need to do to find displacement, we need to keep in mind that from 0 to 5, we're moving in the positive direction because we see this shape above our x-axis. But from 7 to 9, we're moving in the negative direction because this graph shape is below my x-axis, okay? So for displacement, I am going to say 1 half 5 times 20 minus 1 half, uh, let's see, 2 times 10. Okay, notice that I'm subtracting here because we have to keep in mind direction with displacement. So if we do this properly, we should end up getting 40 meters for our displacement. Okay, now the only thing that's different for distance is we're simply adding these two values together. Okay, because remember, distance is total path traveled. We don't care about direction. So for distance, then, we should get 60 meters. Okay, now, as I looked the other day, uh, I saw a lot of us do a really nice job with this. So understand that little graphic that I gave you and understand the information that we can get from these various graph shapes. Okay, so real quickly here, once again, just to review, from a position versus time graph, if we take the slope, we get velocity. 
from a velocity versus time graph. If we take the slope, we get acceleration. Okay, and you saw particularly this uh, in this sample problem. Okay, going the other way, if we take the area of an acceleration versus time graph, we get our change in velocity. And then from a velocity versus time graph, again, we saw this. If we take the area, we get our displacement. So please keep in mind this graphic because this is super important, understanding the information that we can pull from these motion graphs. All right, so real quickly here, just an introduction to these things that I call the big four, our kinematic equations, okay? I could sit here and I could derive these kinematic equations for you. They don't just come out of nowhere, um, but I think it's more important for us to just understand how we can use them um, to solve for various unknowns in more complex problems. So up to this point, these are the equations that we, that we know. We know speed is distance over time, we know velocity is displacement over time, and we know acceleration is uh, our change in velocity over a certain time interval. But we have some kinematic equations um, that involve more variables, and they work for all constant acceleration problems. So our first one, and really this one is just a rearrangement of our acceleration equation. We say that V final is equal to V initial plus AT, okay? So understand that if I rearrange this, I, I get this equation right here, okay? Now, next one. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus two times acceleration times our displacement. The third one, displacement is equal to V initial times time plus one half AT squared. And then finally, All right, so these are our four big kinematic equations. Now, I want you to notice something with these equations. They are all dependent on four variables. Okay, they're dependent on four variables, values, whatever you wanna consider. If, in a problem, you can identify three variables, you can find the fourth. Another thing that I will mention here is that notice that this equation right here is not dependent on time. All others are dependent on time. So if you're analyzing a scenario and you don't have time, that typically indicates that we're trying to use this equation right here, okay? So big things with these kinematic equations, and we're gonna practice using these throughout the week in a variety of different ways. We'll do some lab activities. Um, to get some practice with this, we'll do some whiteboarding. But again, they're each dependent on four variables, every single one of these. If you can identify three known variables in a, in a scenario, you can find the fourth unknown, okay? So I tried to keep this video lecture nice and short for you. Um, please uh, try and utilize these uh, as you work throughout the Pivot Interactive today. Um, and other than that, uh, take care of physics students.